Welcome to Casual Climbers, a new podcast about hiking in the Blue Ridge Mountains of South and North Carolina. I'm Roy Padrick, and as always, I'm joined by my wife and adventure buddy, Donna. Hello. I'm so happy to be here and so excited to be talking about hiking. It's become something of a passion of mine this past year. It's very therapeutic. It is very therapeutic. Every time we get out into the, into the mountains or hit the trails, it's just wonderful. It's rejuvenating after a long week of sitting in front of the computer screens. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's soul rejuvenating. It is soul rejuvenating. You're right. So this brand new podcast is for anyone looking to hike here in the Blue Ridge Mountains area of upstate South Carolina and Western North Carolina, but really it'd be anywhere. And if you're not sure about how to get started or if you're ready to hit the trails, this podcast is for you. There's a ton of podcasts out there for experienced hikers. But as we found when we were starting our hiking adventure, there's not too many for beginners, older hikers like me in my late 40s or early 50s. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And those who think like me that maybe they're not physically up for the challenge. Exactly. We both have bum knees. And let's face it, my friend, we are not spring chickens anymore. Our kids are all in their 20s and 30s now. Not sure how that happened. I don't know either. There's some sort of time skip or something like that, I think. Something, yeah. So in this particular episode, Donna, we're going to talk about a couple of trails at Paris Mountain State Park in Greenville, South Carolina. It's one of my favorite parks in the state. Now, this park has 10 named trails, all of which offer something a little different and the varying difficulties and lengths. Can can you tell us a little bit about the park? Oh, absolutely. Paris Mountain State Park is a 1,540-acre park with tons of activities and amenities, including swimming, hiking, mountain biking, paddleboarding, canoeing, camping, and pavilions for events. It was created in 1935 and developed by the Civilian Conservation Corps during the Great Depression. It features 14 miles of hiking trails and is pet-friendly as long as they're on a leash. There is a park center with various sundries, and the staff is very friendly and helpful. You know, it's crazy to think that this state park, which is actually, it's a Monotmad, which is a solitary mountain, not part of a regular range. It's like 10 minutes from downtown Greenville, and there's 14 miles of hiking trails in there. It's it's an amazing park. I know you and I both love it. We love to go there together or or by ourselves if we just need to get away. Absolutely. It's um <laughs> it's funny because downtown Greenville is pretty awesome in and of itself, but every time I think, do I want to go walk around downtown Greenville? Do I want to fight the traffic? Do I want to find parking? Do I want yeah. downtown Greenville is amazing, but Paris Mountain State Park is something different. If you need time away from people, now people are there, but you pretty much you know, when you're hiking, you might pass. Yeah, we went today and there was, we didn't run into a single person on either of the trails that we went. Now, to be fair, today is Christmas Day. Right. But even on, on regular days, as long as we don't go on a Saturday or Sunday, we can often have the trails to ourselves and maybe pass one or two people. It's really great. Yeah, it really is. So it is really well maintained. One thing to note is that there are no trash cans near the picnic areas. Whatever you bring in, you got to bring out. Well, there's one dumpster you can dump your trash in near the main parking lot. But if you have a picnic there, bring garbage bags. That's a great point. Yeah, because, uh, you know, a lot of people bring food or even snacks and stuff like that. And there, there is, like you said, nowhere to throw it away. So be prepared for that if you go to Paris Mountain. Yeah, what you bring in, you bring out. Yeah. This doesn't bother me because that's less work for the park staff. And I'm sure it cuts back on the raccoons and other wildlife being interested in the picnic areas. But I know we're here to talk hiking. I mentioned this because some of the hiking trails run alongside some of the picnic areas. The whole park is just so it, beautiful. It's it's beautiful. You you hit the nail on the head. And and so um, before we get started on, on the actual hikes today, I wanted to let our listeners know, that, look, there's a number of apps and websites out there that provide details on trail length and difficulty. But our podcast is going to cater our information specifically to new hikers. Now we found apps like All Trails, Trail Link, Kamut, there's there's a whole host of others. And they all provide difficulty ratings, but they're based on experienced hikers. Exactly. Yeah. So you remember when we first started out, <laughs> oh, this is a moderately difficult 
a hike should take you 90 minutes. And the one that we did that two and a half hours later and we were panting as we were coming, dragging our carcasses out of the trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was cartoon-like the way I looked. Oh, it, was, it was amazing. <laughs> I think I was crawling. Out. Yeah, I was drenched in sweat and this was in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> So in our podcasts, our difficulty levels will be based on beginners or out of shape hikers like me. Like us, to <laughs> like be us. fair. <laughs> I was not allowed to say that. I can only say it for me. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we're going to break them down into four categories. Piece of cake, break a sweat, feel the burn, and pain bringer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll also always tell you if it's wheelchair friendly, kid friendly, and what their view rewards are. And the view rewards in some of these parks we're going to talk about over the next several weeks are spectacular. Today, we're going to cover the trails in the piece of cake category at Paris Mountain State Park. Now, there are two in our estimation to be piece of cake for beginners or out of shape hikers. And they are Turtle Trail and the Lake Placid Loop. Of these two, Donna, which is your favorite? Oh, I love them both for different reasons. Turtle Trail is short but interesting in that the path is curvy enough and you pass over a very small stream. I always find it interesting how there in back trails, you get a different feel in the scenery when you head back. You notice different things. Yeah. Things that you might not have noticed. You might not have noticed that hollowed out tree on the way in, but you see it clearly on your way out. And like you said, today is Christmas, December 25th, and we decided to do what we like to call now holiday hikes. We eat our big holiday meal for lunch and then go for a hike to walk it off. It seems to be a natural deterrent to acid reflux. And the effects of tryptophan (laughs) making us go take a nap after we get done eating all that turkey. Yeah, so, but the turtle trail was just beautiful. Even though we're past the fall colors, the reds and the yellows, some of the plants were still green. I don't know. Maybe those plants will stay green all winter. I'll have to look into it. I think there was the rhododendrons stayed green. Um, But yeah, there were some amazing colors. You're right about that. But some, yeah, some of the trees, I don't know what kinds of trees those were, but they had leaves that were almost beige in color. Yeah, light brown. Yeah, Yeah, it was so pretty. You could almost like kind of see the light through the leaves. So the brown leaves on the ground and the beige leaves in the trees. Turtle Trail is pretty great. It was pretty great. That was our first time taking it. Yeah. Because it is so short and it's not really, it's one of those out and back so it doesn't go anywhere. It's not a loop or anything like that. So let's break it down by the numbers. Here's Turtle Trail by the numbers. The length is 1.07 miles there and back. The time to complete it was 32 minutes at a leisurely pace. Now, when we say the time to complete, Donna and I are talking about a very leisurely pace. This is, we we give you the leisurely pace because oftentimes when we see the apps give times, it says, oh, 30 minutes to complete. But that's if you're really hoofing it. Our leisurely pace is truly a leisurely pace. So when we say that it took 32 minutes to complete, it should take any beginning hiker 32 minutes to complete. Yeah, I like to stop and take a picture here and there. And I remember um, on this hike, I I stopped and I said, oh my gosh, if you were going to film a movie of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or like some fairy tale, you would need these kind of paths with the leaves on the ground and the different elevations around and stuff. It's just magical. Yeah, it it really is. And this one didn't have a lot of elevation gain either. It was only 85 feet. So when we talk elevation gain, that means uh, a change in elevation from the lowest to the highest point. The lowest may not be at the beginning. It may not be at the end. Just throughout the course of the 1.07 miles, there was the lowest point was at this point and the highest point was 85 feet above that. So anytime you hear us talk elevation gain, that's what we mean. And the friendliness. So this particular trail was very kid-friendly. Yeah. But wheelchairs would probably have a hard time. There were a number of rocks and roots. Yeah, we, yeah. We tried to kick some of the big rocks off the trail. Yeah. You could probably get a wheelchair through there, but it would be challenging to get a wheelchair through there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Donna, tell me what you thought of this trail. Oh, I loved it. I, I would definitely do it again. Um, I think, uh, as you mentioned, rhododendrons, but I think that there were also some mountain laurels. There are definitely a lot of mountain laurels in there. So we need to go back in the spring. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, we'll probably go back 20 times between now and spring, probably. but 
but yeah, the, I, when when those flowering bushes are in bloom, I definitely want to go back because a different kind of magical feel, I think, when when everything's in bloom. Yeah, it's it's really nice. Um, so we we've been we've been doing hiking here at Paris Mountain for about eight months now. So we've seen three, well, I guess almost four full seasons, and it does have a different personality every single season, right? So spring, the mountain laurels are just exploding, and it's absolutely breathtaking with color. In the fall, the leaves are changing to yellows and reds and oranges and browns, so it's really nice. But in the winter, it has a different personality. Like we saw today, one of the things I really love about the winter is you can see through mm. to the elevation changes, right? Like we saw deer the other day when we went on a hike, not on this particular trail, but it, there's a chance you could see it on literally any trail that you're taking it on. And you can see the elevation changes, you can see the ridges, you can see the squirrels, and then and the chipmunks so what when we were taking that hike what did you particularly like about it i just liked how the path was curvy and i don't know i just i just felt i just i just loved that path it was nice because uh on the way there the ridge there was this pretty deep ridge yeah maybe 30 feet or more that was on our right hand side yes and so there was a stream winding through it you could hear it babbling over rocks and stuff like that and like you said on the way back you do get to see a different perspective right like we saw picnic tables and then we saw also the amphitheater that was in there mm, oh yeah yeah so what do they do with the amphitheater in the summer and uh, they have music in the woods. Uh, they, th we did, we, we meant to go to that. We, we did didn't. mean to go. So they do concerts right. there they, every, either once a month or every two weeks. Something. At like Paris July Mountain. and August, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And, and, uh, so it's this big open air amphitheater that was built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps. It was their training area. Mm. And so there's these stone steps that people sit on, they bring lounge chairs and stuff like that. And then there's kind of a covered pavilion slash stage in front. And they bring in musical performers, including the Greenville Symphony that does a, a concert there. Yeah. So if you're here in, in, in the summer, definitely check that out. If you can, listening to music in the, in the woods is is really great because you can't hear any when you're that deep in you can't hear traffic yeah there's nothing but trees all around you you can't see any any sign of civilization right it's a different it's it's an interesting view and i think if i remember correctly there's a tree that they left to grow up out do you remember that yes there's a tree in one of the in what, steps of, yes. of the seating yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of high up if i remember correctly yeah yeah it's yeah. pretty high up <laughs> it's nice you can check that out so so yeah i mean turtle trail it's a nice simple trail uh i would definitely rate it in the piece of cake category for new beginners yeah i like how it dumps you off at when you because you start really close to the the ranger you station start right there at the park center yeah that's the, right yeah. yeah that's where you can like buy the sundries the the like a little t-shirt or i got you that that little bigfoot little figurine yeah you, there. you can get jams and jellies and yeah. of course stuff like water and and there's bathrooms and showers there because right there at the ranger station there's in lake placid they have a swimming area which yeah. is really nice in the summer yes um, but if you when you finish the tur turtle trail if you don't turn around and go back you you are pretty much dumped off where right at the beginning of the um campground we yeah. haven't been camping there yet but but if if you were going to camp there and then you wanted to walk to the um to the park center to, yeah, yeah that that's your path it's a great way to do it rather than having to walk, walk down the, the road, road. Yeah. yeah 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 that's a great way to do it so okay so we also like to talk about what gear you're going to need for certain hikes because obviously there are some hikes that require no gear at all mm -hmm. and then there are some hikes that we've been on where we needed a gallon of water on a backpack with snacks, two hiking poles, mm -hmm. climbing gear. So so what kind of gear did this require, so, do you think, for a beginner? Yeah, so this being the, one of the piece of cake hikes, I mean, I, I always bring a snack and some water just in case. I stopped a few times today to get a drink of water, but I didn't really, really need to. And I never reached for my snack. Yeah, so I I just it's winter and I always bring this really light 
like parachute material backpack with me. It's, it's my security blanket. I bring it because I, I'm a Floridian living in Northern South Carolina. And as I, so I start off a hike wearing usually hat, gloves, jacket, all this stuff. I bring the backpack empty so that I can put the hat, gloves, and jacket in it once I get warm. So it fills up as you go along. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. mainly what I'm bringing that backpack for. So I, I don't know that you really need, I mean, honestly, I, I, I wear my hiking boots just because they're comfortable, but you could, you could do this hike in tennis shoes. You could do this hike in tennis shoes. I agree. Now, Donna and I carry trekking poles with us. Uh, on all of our hikes. Sometimes we, we carry two, sometimes we just carry one. We'll always have at least one, but this one definitely didn't need it. Yeah, yeah. But trekking poles are useful in a number of ways, even if the hike doesn't require a lot of leverage. So, so right. just for the re- just for the listeners, what? why do you carry your, your hiking pole? Well, I mean, I carry it for that extra little bit of balance, but I didn't need it on this trip, on this hike. Honestly, I, in the back of my mind, I have a hiking pole in case there's ever a snake along the path. Maybe I can scooch it off the path. That's with a, a great pole. idea. I am yeah. definitely not. I don't want to have to look for a stick for that. Um, we didn't see any snakes today, so that's a good thing. Um, another reason to have one hiking pole with you is if you're going to cross over some water and you want to test how deep that water is, we, uh, we didn't really need Apples. Not on this one, we didn't. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, but I just—it's just something nice to have. I mean, if if you're two people that are hiking, you could just get one set of hiking poles, and and you could each carry one hiking pole, and it's and be fine on most hikes. I uh, think, yeah, yeah, most of the hikes that we've done today, yeah, yeah. I mean, there have been a couple there that that we've couple. done where I wanted. You know, we're definitely, we had two poles, but I also wanted a crane to pull me up the steep right. hills. Yeah, no, there, we've been on a hike or two that I have wanted a helicopter to come in and take, yeah. me, take me out. <laughs> Those are the pain bringer <laughs> category ones. Yeah. I, I also like the hiking pole because it keeps your arms active, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, if you're just walking for long periods of times and your arms are down by your side, you can get swelling in the hand. Mm-hmm. And so having a hiking pole or two keeps your arms up and your hands higher than they would be if they're just hanging by. So it really is helpful yeah. in, in that particular area. Because if you think about it, hiking is working your legs. But if you have the hiking poles, then it becomes more of a full body aerobics. Yeah, it does. It does. And it, it just, it, I feel better with it, especially going down inclines. Mm. Going down inclines, having the hiking pole gives you a lot more feeling of security and balance going down some of these inclines. Yeah. So, but yeah, I definitely felt like tennis shoes would have been fine in this, in the, on this particular trail. Uh, a hiking pole wasn't necessary, but of course we always have them. So yeah. Did you feel anything else would be needed for this? Oh no. Yeah. I, I mean, How would you rate this on a scale of one to 10, 10 being amazing? Oh, the, well, yeah, it was, it was probably, it was probably a seven or eight. Seven. I think seven's fair for a nice short hike. That was super easy to get through. Uh, it was nice. Yeah. And, and I can imagine in the spring with the mountain laurels, it would probably be bumped up. Yeah. Or in the fall with the reds and the yellows. Yeah. Or in the fall with the reds and yellows. Yeah. So, so there were no places to stop during right. during the hike but yeah. there is there is the park center at the beginning yeah and the campground at the end in the middle yeah. if you wanted to and you mentioned that it was it took us 30 minutes there and back, there and back. so 15 minutes one way you i don't know if I don't, I didn't need a bench. I didn't need a bench. Yeah. And there have been times where we have needed yeah, yeah, benches. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was not one of them. So, so for you guys listening out there, uh, if you're thinking about doing turtle trail, tennis shoes is fine. You don't need ex- expensive hiking boots. You can bring a pole if you want to feel more active, but it's not necessary. Now, didn't you say, so a lot of these trails, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but um, a lot of these trails, Bikes, mountain bikers are allowed, but oh. I think I think this is one that mountain mountain bikers are not yes, allowed. Yes, thank you so much for bringing that up. So one of the big things about Paris Mountain is a lot of the trails are mountain bike accessible, and so we've been on a number of trails where we've had to step out of the way for mountain bikers, and they're always usually very, very gracious fun. about it. They let you know in plenty of time, but 
the, the good thing about the turtle trail is mountain bikes are not allowed. So if you have kids or dogs or, or a dog and you don't want to have to worry about mountain bikes, this is a nice short hike where you can go up and back and not have to worry about mountain bikes. Thank you very much for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, turtle trail is a winner in my book. It's a very short one. It's super easy. Neither of us broke a sweat. Uh, it was a super leisurely pace. So no, it's always it was also 50, 56 degrees. It was also 56 degrees, but we have been in colder weather where we were sweating at the end of it. Yeah, that's true. So so a nice, a nice, good, easy trail. I would recommend if, if you have never hiked in the mountains before a day in your life and you want a first trail to, to dip your toe in the water, Turtle Trail would be a good choice for you. Now, metaphorically, dip your toe in the water. There's no water on Turtle Trail, really. Yeah. No, there's not. I mean, there's a stream yeah, a little yeah. off to your right. Yeah. Okay, so the more challenging of the two piece of cake trails at Paris Mountain is the Lake Placid Loop. And here's the Lake Placid Loop by the numbers. It's 0.8 mile loop, mm -hmm. 25 minutes at a leisurely pace. Elevation gain is 39 feet, but that is misleading. And it's very kid friendly. But it is not for wheelchairs, not the whole way. Yeah. You can get through some of it with wheelchairs, but if you want to do the whole loop, a wheelchair cannot make it down the steps to get down to the bottom of the dam. So we've done this trail a bunch of times, probably more than any of the other trails that, that we've done at Paris Mountain. What, what do you like about this hike? What are your favorite points? Um, well, there's just something about walking around a lake and this particular lake it's an easy hike, but it's also rustic. Uh, on the far side of the lake, when you're when you're on the far side of the lake, there's trees, and I mean, you can look to your well, depending on which direction you're going, look to your left or your right to see the lake. There's sometimes I wonder why it's it's. I used to think it was a little too rustic. Sometimes I wonder why they've just let fallen trees stay fallen. But if you look at them, they've created a whole new ecosystem for other insects and animals. Yeah, that's what the park staff says. Okay. They say they only remove the parts of it that are blocking the trails mm -hmm. um, because falling trees are a part of nature. And they do provide, uh, like you said, the ecosystem for insects and lizards and snakes. So they prefer to leave them there. Even if they're struck down by lightning, they prefer to leave them there. Yeah, there um, is a certain beauty to them. There I, is, I've yeah. I've come to appreciate them. Yeah, there is. But yeah, and there are benches along this this trail. Yeah, there are. Even though this is sh shorter than, yeah. the, than the loop, there are multiple benches. And I think that's because of just how beautiful the view is. Yeah. Like the view of the lake is really beautiful. It really is nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you want to, if you're walking around Lake Placid and you want to sit on a bench to take a rest or pull out a snack or just look at the water, it's very serene. There's um, there's that roped off part of the lake where people can swim a bit in the heat of summer, but we never really swam there this past summer, did we? No, we got about knee deep in that one day. Yeah. Um, we didn't bring our swimsuits. We got about knee deep in. It's a sandy bottom, a little on the mucky side for my for my taste for swimming, but it in the summer there are people always swimming so yeah. it's it's very popular you can also canoe and kayak there mm -hmm. um, i think they have paddle, paddle and paddle boards you cannot bring your own canoe or kayak you have to rent their equipment oh, okay so remember that listeners um if you're planning on going there for for lake activities you have to use their gear in the lake and there are actually three large lakes on paris mountain and we're going to get to those and other hiking trails yeah you know one thing i never really thought about because when you're hiking around lake placid you get to the point where there's the the dam and the waterfall so the swimming area and um the paddle boats and all that kind of stuff is up there at, at the top i'm guessing that there's like you can't just go over the dam no there's a yeah right i mean it looks like you might be able to but you can't there not only is there a rope but the dam the damn mouth is really high up okay so i mean i guess you could if you if really you gunned it <laughs> You might be able to, but probably not. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. probably not. Okay. It might be interesting to uh, 
look more closely at that. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends on how daredevil you are. I, <laughs> I, I will let you do that trip on your own. Okay. All right. <laughs> but you bring up a really good point. So this has one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the park, right? So this is a simple easy loop. But at the very northern end of the uh, loop is the dam for Lake Placid. And the dam was built by the Civilian Conservation Corps, and it used to help provide water to downtown Greenville back in the 30s and 40s. Well, what the, what the trail has done, and they've done a really nice job at this, is the trail goes around the lake, and then at the part where the dam is, it dips way down to the bottom of the dam. So you can go down to the bottom and there's a boardwalk that crosses the stream where the dam empties out into and you can see the water just cascading down this dam and it's 35 foot it fall waterfall it's beautiful. from there it's yeah. gorgeous yeah it's really really nice it's it's one of the prettier ones there's another dam and a lake at a different hike that we're going to talk about in another episode but this one is just as beautiful yeah we always pause on that boardwalk and maybe take a picture to a selfie or two with the dam water falling behind us and in the ducks at the top who like yes. to sit right at the top of the dam yep. yeah <laughs> they like to catch the fish that are falling over <laughs> so but in that part that's where it becomes tough for physically challenged hikers yeah. because getting down and then back up mm -hmm. is a little challenging yes especially so there's two ways to get up if you're going around the lake counterclockwise uh, you can go up the steep steps. It's not really well-defined steps. It's mm -hmm. more like graded out rocks here and there that are different elevations and different distances. Or you can go around, which is usually the way we go, because it also follows the stream a little ways. So it's kind of nice and it's more gradual. But going clockwise away from the dam is some pretty steep steps. I'd say a good 12 to 18 inches on some of them. Um, with the logs going across, so you're stepping on top of logs that have dirt padding on them. It's yeah. it's pretty high. So, you, listeners, just be wary of that. If you have trouble trouble with steps, just be aware that that is going to be in something you'll encounter. Some of those steps you can kind of walk around, but even walking around them, the slope is pretty steep. The slope is pretty steep. Yeah. And you know, today with slippery leaves and it has been raining so it was wet slippery leaves so i i still chose to walk around some of those high steps but it was i don't know it was kind of kind of risky yeah it, it's certainly doable like we've said since the beginning i am not in the best shape in the world but i can do these and so i think if you're interested in doing this, you certainly can do it. Having poles in this particular hike helps that, because yeah. there are no handrails on these steps. So having the pole help you get leverage up yes. is really useful in that particular one. Yeah, I agree. So that brings us into the gear. In this particular one, I feel tennis shoes would be fine. And we see a lot of people with tennis shoes on this particular hike, but I always feel more comfortable with something with more grip. Yeah, so so tennis shoes are not all created equal. So I have my New Balance tennis shoes and they have more of a tread, if you will, um, than my Keds. My Keds, I would not. I would not wear yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slick sold tennis shoes wouldn't be good. They're super cute, yeah. but not for this. Yeah. You do need some tread. That's a good point. Some tread. Um, I, I like my hiking shoes. You love your hiking boots. Yeah. My canes. Um, yeah. You know, I, I use Merrill hiking shoes. Neither of us are paid to say this. No. <laughs> we, we, we bought them full retail value. <laughs> and these are ones that we just, these are our preferred, preferred shoes. And so, uh, Having tread on this particular, especially in that area, going up and down into the dam, I, I always feel way more confident with, with hiking shoes. And then the poles, of course, going down and then back up in, in these areas, I find more helpful. The other parts of the trail, you can totally get away with not having great tread on your shoes or poles, but yeah. the dam area is the one questionable part where you, you may want to be careful. Yeah. Ironically, the most rewarding... I think part. Oh, it is. Yeah. to get to. <laughs> I agree. It's by far the most rewarding of the one. The view and the sound of the water and, and just all of it. Yeah. 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 It's a great, it's, it's the uh, Lake Placid Loop is, is a really nice hike. It's easy to get to. So there's, there's access points. I think there's 
four or five access points that you can get to. Like there's two parking lots that are 10 feet away from, from the trail that you can start and stop at any point. Uh, and of course it passes right by the rangers, the, the uh, park center. Yes. So it's a good place to hit the bathroom before or the bathroom after, get a drink. They have water fountains and stuff there. Yeah, yeah and they have some, uh, I think they have some um, vending machines too. They do, vending machines and water bottle filling stations. Yeah. There's there's plenty of access to this this loop. It's one of the better, more accessible loops in the park. Uh, and it's really nice. So if... If you've tackled the turtle trail and yes. you've mastered that one, then I suggest hitting the Lake Placid loop. So in the next episode, we'll cover some of the more challenging ones. There's the Mountain Creek loop that p- pops up right off of the Lake Placid loop. And there's some really spectacular stream access points there that you can get dip your feet in and, and get in. And we're also going to cover some other ones like the Sulphur Springs loop. And then one of my favorites, Mountain Lake loop ah, at the very top. Yes. Absolute favorite of the park. And then we're going to get into some more challenging ones like the Canuga and the Brissy Ridge. So we have a lot in store for you, for you guys listening. Yeah. And in store for me too, because I've done portions of these hikes, but I, a lot of these hikes, I have not done the whole thing. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to do these for the listener, right? So we're going to actually do this, the the full hike before we record this. Yes. Yeah. Definitely bringing snacks and drinks. On some of these. Yeah. On some of these are going to be like the full Sulphur Spring Trail takes almost a day to do. So, yeah, that's a long one. Yeah. Um, so we're going we're gonna to do all this for, for you guys, and we hope that you find it useful. Please feel free to like and subscribe, leave a comment on whatever podcast platform that you listen to. But now let's talk tech. Right. So as we mentioned, there's a bunch of different apps and services out there that help you track your hikes, but they're not needed. You don't use any tech when you're out there, except for your step counter on your on my watch. On your yeah, watch. And I actually forgot to wear that today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I like to use all trails. OK. Now, I, let me just say this up front. We are not paid or endorsed by anybody. I like all trails. You may have an app that you prefer. By all means, please use it. I will reference all trails just because that's the one that I use. Um, And I like it because you can download the hiking maps to your phone and track through GPS. And doing so is really great because a lot of the trails that we go on, you don't have cell service. Mm -hmm. So having the map already downloaded makes it so much easier to... Some of these trails that we've done... You know, at different parks like uh, Jones Gap, yeah, and Table Rock, some of those some of those trails are a little, I don't know which way to go, and right. so having an app helps a lot, and it also keeps track of all the things like the elevation changes and the distance and the time. Right. I will say, um, for new beginning hikers, they put this rectangular paint thing on trees on on trails like so but it, pay attention at the beginning of your hike so the trail that we followed today was a red mark turtle trail was red yeah yeah and then i forgot the color of um the placid lake, lake placid. placid loop is yellow okay yeah so you just kind of look around if you're if you're confused about well which way do i go try to find a tree that has that paint mark of that color so that you know which way to go they're pretty good about keeping those up they're pretty well marked, and you can also get a trail map at the park center. Yes, um, that that'll give you a, a good map, and it'll have the colors on there too. But I feel free to not have all trails because I know you have all trails. <laughs> but I I do want to say too, there's a free version of all trails, and there's a not free version of all trails, and the not free version of all trails is the one where you can download and have these maps offline. That's true. The paid version. Now, listeners, I am not saying that you need to get a paid subscription to all trails. That is not at all what I'm saying. You can go out there without any technology whatsoever. And look at the trees. And and just enjoy the, the trail. This is just what I like to use, just because I like to keep track of my progress. I like to see which trails I've done, which ones I have yet to do. So this is my personal preference. And it's good for me Every once in a while when I'm starting to get a little tired to say, how much further do we have to go? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without something like that, you wouldn't necessarily know. But, yeah. you know, with, with, the, with the map, it'll tell you, hey, you've got 
this much left to go, which is really nice. Yeah. The, the, the downside to all trails, however, though, is it does not integrate with your smartwatch. So there are some apps like Komoot that has a smartwatch application. Uh, all trails does not yet. I know that they said that they're working on it, but they do not have any yet. So if if you're a heavy smartwatch, smartphone user like me, I'm on the Android platform, as is as is Donna. They don't have that integrated yet. But I mean, the app is on your phone. You pull it out of your pocket. It's yeah. it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Some hikers we pass use GoPro cameras. Some of the mountain bikers use GoPro cameras or or other type of activity camera. It's not something we do. I think just because we take such a leisurely pace, you know, and if we want to stop mm-hmm. and take a picture of something or do a recording, we just stop. Yeah, yeah. Take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. But again, listeners, it's your experience, right? Make it whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're still figuring this out. We're still new. Yeah. And so we're gonna we're gonna grow with you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, hopefully we share stuff that will get you started. Right. And then you can write to us and say, oh, guys, you were way wrong on this. This is what you should be doing. And I'd love to hear that. <laughs> or or maybe you're a new hiker that has some different tips or tidbits. Yeah. Feel free to share them. You know, we'd love to hear from from anybody who has tips. We spent a lot of time researching the right gear and the right apps and the right things to bring and how to handle it and what what first aid kits and all that stuff. And after a while, we realized what was not important and what was important. And so hopefully we're, we're cutting down all that time for you. Yeah. So next time we're going to cover a few of the break a sweat trails at Paris mountain. And there are some really great ones there. Okay. All right. I'm down. Which one are you looking forward to the most? (laughs) I don't know the names of the trails at Paris mountain. I am, I am, you lead, I'll follow. I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. I think we're going to start at the pavilion there at the trailhead of Sulphur Springs that has yeah. the nice creek that, yeah, that yeah, runs yeah. through it. And it's oh, got a giant talking... pavilion with, yeah, there's three of them in there that are break a sweat trails. Uh huh. Um, are you talking about I the like... one where I had to crawl over that boulder and the past that other dam? That's going to be, that's going to be, Is that... um, one of the one of the tougher ones. That's okay. going to be a okay a little bit tougher one. That's going to be a feel the burn one. I'm still I'm still trying to figure out your your you know I need to get our system. Your, yeah, 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 we need yeah. to get our system. <laughs> well, I think our system will will kind of progress as we go along. Yeah. yeah. But for right now, it is a piece of cake or super easy ones. Anybody uh-huh. should be able to do it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Break a sweat. They're 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 certainly doable, but. You're gonna you're gonna get a little bit of a workout, like 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 a little bit more miles, a little bit more elevation change. Yeah, yeah, but, a, a, a little bit more rocks, a little bit more roots. It's it's gonna make you work and not turn you off know, your brain. You know what I'm amazed at is sometimes we're on a trail, just walking at our leisurely pace, like you say, and somebody's running by us, and there's roots and rocks and everything. I know they're running by us. They're and amazing. I'm like, what? How how are you not like super concerned about? Falling and breaking a hip. And I've, I've never <laughs> seen anybody fall. No, right? no, no. These people are amazing at it. And and so as a you know, when Don and I were talking about starting this podcast, I thought to myself, well, what right do I have <laughs> to create a podcast about hiking? Because look at these people blowing by me. But then there's a need for this. There is a need because I want. I would have listened to something like this starting out. Yeah. Right. Somebody, look, I'm 48 and I'm not in the best shape and I have a bum knee. Yeah. You know, so what tips do I, would I have for me starting out hiking? Because I, I do, we love doing it, right? And we've done do- dozens, maybe even over a hundred hikes in the past eight months of varying difficulties. And so we've learned a lot and I'm hoping that we can share what we've learned with others. Yeah. I keep my knee brace in the Jeep now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So next time we're going to cover some break of sweat uh, trails of Paris mountains. And there's some great ones there. Um, But look, I I want to thank everyone for listening to casual climbers. Be sure to subscribe, rate us on Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Spotify, or whatever other podcast service you get. And I really hope to see you out on the trail. Yeah, I do too. It's uh, hiking. People are the happiest people. Hiking people are the happiest people. They really are. Yeah. Bye everybody. Bye.